meetings. In this, uh, in this study, part, uh, I, I, I identified the two participants as S1 and S2. S2 studied in the field of engineering and science. He was a master student while he participated in while he participated in this study, and uh, um, his uh, primary interest while browsing web page was uh, about sports news. S2 study in the field of applied foreign languages and education. She was a PhD. She was a PhD student while she participated in this study, and uh, her interest of browsing web page. Her interest while browsing web page is about daily news. Okay, now we are at the findings of this study. As I mentioned before, three research questions. Uh, the findings will be uh, organized by re three research questions. And now we are at the first research question. Exactly how do learners put code to use? After I uh, analyzed the data I collect, I found that there, there, uh, there is three, two phase of their use of calculator. In first phase, uh, both participants uh, would create point chunks at the beginning. And S1 create point chunks before reading the text, while S2 would create point chunks after she read the text. After the, uh, after the calculation was highlighted, and both participants will browse highlight collocations in the web page. And S S1's uh, behavior of browsing web of uh, browsing co highlighted collocation would be uh, he will he read the he read the uh, the sentence that uh, contain the collocation the highlighted collocation. While uh, S2 will focus more on the quotation forms uh, and also uh, access the examples provided by Colocator. And after understanding how the two participants use Colocator, I asked them, oh, what, under what circumstances do, uh, do they think they will use Colocator? And both participants said, oh, they would use it when they have time. So I start uh, start thinking, what does it mean by they have time? Will they continuously use Calculator? So uh, I uh, keep looking at their login record. And on this slide shows S1's login record. The red circle in this slide means uh, S1 use Calculator outside the meeting. And the black lines uh, means that the S1 use calculator during the meeting. And as we can see that uh, S1 continuously use calculator except the last meeting. And now we are at S2 slot in record. And uh, it's obvious that S2 use calculator frequently at the beginning of the meeting, but she decreased her use after meeting four. If, all, uh, if I only look in at the quantitative login data, uh, I would think maybe S2 just have less time to use calculator. But after I um, analyzed the interviews, I found that their decrease of use might, uh, uh, might be explained by how they thought about calculator. And I will uh, address it in research question two. Uh, research question two is about what rules do learners ascribe to calculator. And in this session, I will focus on the is the reason the reasons why uh, they will decrease their use. Okay, and first it's about a uh, uh, proper talking tool. It means that the participant uh, expect that they could have a tool to solve their. Uh, problem that they encountered immediately instead of uh, providing them to um, look at the collocations and uh, do not know when they could encounter it again or use it. And second is about the habit. 
uh, the participant mentioned that because using Calcutter did not become uh, their web browsing habit, hence when, uh, when they are browsing web page, they still then think about using it. And the third is about learning purpose. In my study, my participants mentioned that because uh, learning correlation did not did not become their uh, is not the most important uh, thing for them to learn English. So uh, in this study, maybe uh, this reason might cause them decrease the use of coding. And fourth, it's about insufficient input to memorize. My participants point out that um, it's hard to learn a quotation by only exposed uh, by few exposed to the exposure to the uh, quotation only one or two times. Okay. And now we are at the third research question: Does quotation play any facilitated role in raising awareness of English quotations? And this is. This table is the awareness behavior I uh, found and categorized into three categories. And first is about the, uh, identifying the part of speech of one or both words in a quotation. And second is searching for quotation without using quotation. And third is considering whether one word in a quotation pair could be substituted with another word. And after reviewing uh, all the data from my study uh, and identifying awareness behavior, um, I reviewed the literature related to language awareness to see if there are any models or theoretical frameworks that could assist me to describe uh, my participants' levels of awareness. And I found that then there's a uh, four level of language awareness helpful in framing uh, the awareness is simplified by my participant. And level one in on this slide shows affordance. It refers to human beings, human humans being born uh, with the ability to produce language. And the second second le uh, level two uh, indicate uh, refers to humans understanding the understanding that, for example, a language. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Level two refers to a uh, human's understanding that, for example, a uh, language has a uh, grammar, words have part of speech, or uh, a language exhibits another uh, phenomena, uh, exhibits other phenomena. And level three consists of two levels, which are 3A and 3B. For 3A, it refers to a human obtains the ability to produce uh, or play with the language in a creative or communicative way. And the 3B refers to when a human can talk about the language um, or what produced or others have produced. In other words, they are able to use uh, meta language. And in level uh, level four, critical awareness uh, indicates that a human obtains the ability to critically analyze the language he or she produced or others produced. After knowing the four levels of, of awareness, I tried to. Uh, make a connection between the awareness behaviors in my study and from the years and I found that in my uh, first category it meets the level 3B because um, the participant was able to talk about grammar but they do not critically uh, analyze the language and uh, for the second category in my of my category, uh, it can be 3A because um, the behaviors of searching for guessing the possible communication is a, a behavior is like a behavior that try to control or master uh, what a 
they know about color patient. And the third, third uh, kind of choreography to level four, because um, they try to critically analyze the words in a color painting pair. Okay. And now we are at the implications of this study. In this study, four implications will be uh, proposed. At first, it's about the identification of awareness behavior. Compared with previous study, um, this study tried to provide a different uh, view to the methods of evaluating uh, language awareness. Most study of language awareness concerned more about the qualitative product and uh, such as cognition forms. And also, um, they try to claim their evidence by assessment. However, in this study, uh, I, this study concerns more on the qualitative process and the, how the learners thought and the, the change of behaviors and how the response after they see the highlighted collocations on the web page and after the collocation phenomena. And the second is about collocator use. Actually, this idea uh, occurred to me when I uh, look at S2's interview, and she mentioned that um, her uh, her attention of reading the text will be distracted by uh, the highlighting, even uh, because she cannot undo the effect of highlighting. So um, I think this kind of situation can make a connection between uh, our uh, make connection to our scripting. Actually, scripting. Uh, Indicates that a software was designed to uh, design in a linear and logical way that uh, assumed the users could use in a certain process. However, for the over uh, scripting, it means that the learners would, uh, when a tool was used by the learners or the users, there there are usually some uh, unpredictable and non-linear uh, usage. Uh, uh, happened while they use the tool. Hence, uh, I I think uh, for, for for a design for a design of a uh, tool, I think that they should take uh, they should think about the over scripting situation according to the users while they design the tool. And the uh, third is about learners' characteristics. Actually, I found. The characteristics of the learners might affect the use of color and uh, also affect how much help they will receive from using color And I found three kinds of correct three aspects of characteristics. The first is uh, how they value collocation knowledge in while they use color And the second is about uh, what's their academic background. And third is whether they have primarily uh, reading interest when they are reading the text. I think if uh, the participants, the learners have uh, a primary reading interest when they are reading, it's more possible that they will have a deeper understanding of the text. And it's also more possible that they could uh, try, they would try to understand the language that used used in the text. And the first is about learning of ecology. Actually, uh, this uh, idea came to me after I conducted this study. And I think, um, can I, uh, a question occurred to me, which is, can an incidental learning tool uh, succeed when a learner does not believe in incidental learning? And in my study, uh, both participants um, still try to learn the communication in an intentional way, even I try to form the context of incidental learning. I think it might be, uh, this situation might happen because the learners in Taiwan uh, usually been, uh, have been trained to learn about, learn, sorry, the learners in Taiwan has been, have been trained to learn about language instead of uh, learning language in a communicative way. Okay, so uh, I think uh, for the future study, the researchers should try to 
uh, take this into consideration. And the conclusion of this study would be, while previous study have emphasized and uh, focused on the uh, uh, emphasize and uh, use quantitative methods uh, to focus on changes in language performance, it is hoped that uh, this study shows the values of a qualitative approach to understanding language awareness, specifically in learning quotations. And such research can contribute to the design of language tools in an ecology of uh, ecology that undervalues into learning. Thanks to this is my presentation. <laughs>